Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Modeling with the Art of Lisa. Wishing you all a blessed Easter, Passover, and happy spring. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I would share this wonderful spring colors. I've had fun with pinks and purples and golds, and I thought I would go ahead and detail this for you today. I have two colors mixed together. It's Joe Sonia Pearl White and Warm White mixed together with some medium to make it nice and loose. I have a premium 10 knot uh, King Art 9375 10 aught mid-length liner and let's get going. All right. Not sure where I'm going to go with this. Of course I have this other piece that I've done that kind of will give me an idea of which direction I should go with this. It's been a busy few months here in my household and I've been in a little bit of a, a YouTube um, oh, YouTube block, kind of like a writer's block. Sometimes when you do things over and over again, you sometimes start to think that perhaps you have nothing left to show. And maybe sometimes it's just the pure joy of showing what you love to do. For those that are new, this is a Norwegian folk art called Rose Molly. It's a decorative art form that goes back to the 1600s typically done on wood with oil. I started in exactly that way, oil on wood, many years ago. And then I switched over to acrylics, oh, about 20 plus years ago. And sometimes I just have fun painting, 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 oh boy, on canvas. And it's a great way to demonstrate. So you can see I've already done, obviously, all my base strokes. And I actually did this a while ago. It's funny, I did this um, canvas in a video. <laughs> I went through the entire thing and then found out that about, oh, five or six minutes into it, it stopped recording. And then I just got frustrated. That was part of my painter's block here for YouTube. It just made me so frustrated that this has been sitting here now for the last couple of weeks. And I said, you know, I have a little peace and quiet and a little time before we go to church and before everybody has woken up today. And I thought that maybe a nice way to spend a little of my Easter morning is sharing the gift that I've been blessed to have. So I'm just having fun with it. If you notice, I don't always follow the exact strokes underneath. I can change it up with my detailing and add to it and just have fun. This style of rose modeling is called Telemark, so it's very asymmetrical, very free-flowing. You have your C and S strokes, so here's your C strokes coming in, and here's an S stroke coming off the back. And this is definitely not traditional colors that I'm using here, but it's very important to have the traditional and know the rules and work with that because anytime you work in a style or whatever you may do you need to know the rules and the traditions first before you can really play with them you know and I always look back at the masters of this art form because just like you go to the museum and you look at a Monet or a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt or a Vermeer, 
and these are the masters of that time, they were experimenting too. So there's masters in rose molly and the different styles, and you can go back and you can pick who did what style. And you know they experimented as well. And it's funny, people will sometimes say, oh, you know, I can't tell the difference between different folk art and the artists who do it. And, oh, no, you can definitely tell. You can definitely tell who did different pieces. You can look at a piece and say, oh, I know, I know that gold medalist did it, or that artist did that particular style. I'm having fun with these dots, and notice they're all pulling down to the root. Rose mulling is all based on flowers. Now they're fantasy flowers, but they're definitely flowers. Oh, I hear Chloe upstairs. Let's hope she stays quiet for a little bit. I'm really hoping to get through this whole thing before I go make some Norwegian pancakes, some tuna panna for today. And we have everybody come down for the Easter bunny. Of course, my kids are older now. We still have the Easter Bunny visiting, and it's a wonderful thing. And then we'll get ready for church. I wish blessings upon each and every one of you that are watching, whether it's on Easter or Passover or whenever you may watch this video. May favor and blessings fall down upon all of you. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And you can see I'm just having fun with this. And I keep moving the piece. I'm moving it because I'm pulling it towards me. It's much easier to pull a brush towards me than it is to pull away. And if you notice, I keep going over to the side. I have my paint here, and I'm twisting my brush through it. I'm using a medium. This medium is a combination of three things. It's a combination of flow medium, retarder, and a glaze medium, which of course is sitting in my other room. Oh no, it's not. It's right here. Woohoo. All right. Clear glaze medium. And it's a one to one to one ratio. And I add enough to my paint here to make it so that it is like um, melted ice cream. I want it to be nice and loose to flow on this. And even if I were doing this in oils, I would want my medium or my detail paint to be wetter than the paint underneath. In oils, you're doing a wet on wet technique. So you need your paint to flow on top of the wet paint underneath. In acrylics, oh, there's Chloe. Well, hopefully she'll be quiet in a moment and I'll get the rest of this done. And hopefully she doesn't wake everybody up. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, but in acrylics, because it's dry underneath, you still want it to flow smoothly on top of that dry paint, so you need it nice and wet for that. Oh, we're getting there. Now, if I'm doing a commission piece or a competition piece, I'll be moving a little slower on my detail work here. This is just a very loose and fun canvas that we're doing today. Here we go. Again, everything that I'm doing still pulls down into this root here. Let's take care of this on this side here. Again, the kind of fun spring colors. I'll have to look through and see which colors these were and I'll, I'll put them in the notes down below. 
Uh, I believe they were folk art colors that I used. So sometimes I don't always use uh, the Joe Sonia. Most of the time I do. But sometimes you'll play around with other colors and use it for different backgrounds. There's a wealth of information out there online for you to find, you know, YouTube and Google and DuckDuckGo and whatever you may use. Okay, there's a flower here, a nice little happy flower. I'll do my homage to uh, Bob Ross here. I do have some friends who find that I am very soothing to listen to. And they do use my videos to help them relax and may perhaps go to sleep. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> I, <laughs> I find a lot of humor in that. So we can say a happy little sea stroke here. And a happy little detail. And a not a happy little Pekingese Shih Tzu upstairs going, Mommy, where are you? Mommy. This is why I need that red vest that says emotional support human. Here we go. She is 11 going on. Oh, she'll be 12 in September. So it's all good. Let's get this flower in here. Notice I don't pull all my lines down to the root here. If I pull them all down one after the other, it gets very stripy and I don't want to get stripy. I want to give some variety. I have thinner strokes and thicker strokes because I want to make it interesting. And it's funny, I don't stress over if I if I make a mistake, what I think is a mistake, I may not say anything because or if I do, I'm like, meh. In the long run, when I look back at the whole piece, I won't see that one thing or two things or th three things or whatever it may be. I won't see it anymore because it gets blended into the whole piece. Let's get the rest of this done here. Again, this is just a black canvas. I haven't prepped it. I just let it flow on top of the black and I'm using uh, when I did the painting underneath I used a dry brush I didn't add medium to the paint so the paint was a little drier and I was able to pull the strokes over the canvas so that the canvas would come through and give the strokes a little extra depth to it I promise I will do a video that shows that again but I do have some on my uh, my site here I want to thank all my new um, subscribers you know if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and hit that subscribe button I promise I will be doing more videos I've been teaching a lot um, so that has had a <laughs> that has taken a lot of my time and then of course I still have three kids and two dogs and a husband and, you know, my parents, my brother and family and, you know, it's uh, not just me painting in the basement. And that's what I do. I paint in the basement. I want to thank everybody for joining me as I put these last few little details on this. I hope that you each and every one of you have a wonderful and blessed day. Whatever day you may watch this video, I hope it's a joy and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you again for joining me. I wish you all a blessed day. Remember, it's just paint. God is good. Take care. Bye-bye.